Yes, thank you so much. Um, our next, uh, I'm very happy to introduce our next uh, most special guest, um, Tokyo Mai, um, which is a champion player of a traditional skill toy that you just saw, um, which is called uh, Kandama and what, which is originally from Japan. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, you just saw him in the video playing shortly uh, with it. Um, and uh, he's, he's joining us for the session today. Also, Yalte is joining us um, uh, and we'll talk to him. Yalte is a software developer and musician. And uh, he also worked with Torquild uh, for a period of time in Chrome Kandama, um, which is the leading uh, Kandama brand in the world. And they will talk about the story behind Chrome. Uh, thank you so much for being here, both of you. Um, yeah. And I leave the floor to you. All right. Thank you very much. As you said, my name is Yelde. I'm here with my good friend Torquil. We've known each other for quite some years. And um, yeah, this is Torquil May. Yeah. He's a young entrepreneur. He has a company, like you said, called Chrome Kandama. Started back in 2009. Started with Heartfulness Meditation in 2010. We even, yeah, traveled in India at one point. It was not planned, but we were both there for quite a good amount of time in the meditation ashram there. And um, yeah, like you said, Gregory, we're going to talk about the story, both from a personal perspective, from a professional perspective. What is Chrome Gandama? How did it start? Where are you now? What's the whole journey? But let's, I mean, we saw a few clips, but let's start out with the, what's, what's the Kandama? What's the... What's the company about? Definitely. So yeah, this is a Kendama and it's this um, traditional Japanese toy game sport. And uh, basically you got the can with three cups and then you got the ball with a spike in it. And let me just show you a few tricks. Yeah. So the first trick you do is get it on the big cup. And it is relatively simple, but kind of like Skateboarding at first glance, back in the day when people saw a skateboard, they might just think, okay, it's just for riding. Um, but there's a lot of ways to express yourself and compete and just hone your skills. And that's the exact same with Kendama. And it's, a, it's all wooden. And yeah, I think uh, for everybody watching, I, I'd love for you to, to try it someday. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I, I got into Kendama back in 2009 at this uh, music festival here in Denmark. And I saw one guy out in the horizon, he was playing Kanama and I had to try it out. Um, so I went up to the, to the dude and he was very, uh, very cool, a very fun guy. And fortunately he had two Kanama, so I got to uh, buy one and, and share it with everybody in my camp. And all of my friends, oh, not all of them, but, but a good chunk of them really wanted to, to play Kanama and it was impossible to buy one online. And, I was still in high school back then, just turned uh, 17. And my friends, they were finishing high school and planning their sabbatical. So we actually made a bet uh, when they came to Japan for, uh, for, for traveling, we made a bet saying, if nobody else had registered the domain Kendama DK when, the, when they went to the factory, um, I should buy the domain and they would bring back some Kendamas. So that's how the company was started. Um, back then, the purpose was very simple to get some Kendama out in the hands because we were playing it all the time, everywhere we went, and a lot of people wanted to join. Mm. And um, it wasn't really good business in the beginning. We sold these Kendamas pretty much at cost, um, but we had a lot, a lot of fun doing it. And um, when I finished high school um, back in 2011, um, the company was one year old um, and I went to India to meditate and I stayed there for, for four months also, got to hang out with the with the elder a lot. And um, when I came back from India, I felt like I, I had a lot of energy and um, a lot of ideas. So we started uh, planning a lot of events everywhere in Denmark and going out to festivals and did little Kendama James. 
And then in the end of 2012, we saw the first Kendama boom in Denmark. Mm. And uh, the biggest newspaper called it the Toy of the Year and gave us um, a link from that webpage straight to ours. So that, that definitely helped a lot. At that point, you were running the company from Co Copenhagen? Like yeah. From, we, from a flat or something? Yeah, we were, <laughs> me and my business partner, we were running the company from his uh, two-room apartment. I, I, I stayed in the kitchen. And I had boxes everywhere around me. And we, of course, we needed to increase our stock. So my room, which is also the stock room and the kitchen, became very, uh, very cramped. Mm. And then by the end of the year, we um, we found a little uh, shop in the neighborhood, uh, this little basement shop, and and kind of like wanted to expand the the venture and also the stock. Mm. And unfortunately, I, I also got got my own place. And uh, Oh, you were staying with him as well. I was also staying. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely. I forgot. Um, okay. Yeah, so from 2009 to 2011, 12, it was already like expanded quite fast from a from a small idea opportunity that just kind of grew yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah, it it, it really took a speed in 2012. Um, we also started our own brand. So in the beginning, we we're importing these Japanese kanamas, very nice ones and traditional. Um, and we had a lot of feedback on the product, so we really wanted to make it cooler, make some more expressive designs, and also change the shape. So we pretty much broke up the whole shape and started designing every single thing uh, from scratch um, because we were playing Kendama in another way than how they used to do in Japan, but that's a whole other story. Mm. Um, and yeah, 2012 was definitely the year we got started, and as quickly we rose, as quickly we, we dropped down again because we started producing producing our own product and we had a lot of good stuff and a lot of bad stuff. And a lot of this stuff also came in uh, way too late. So we missed a lot of the holiday sales and you know we didn't really know what we were doing, but we just started to, to play this game and more and more people wanted to, to buy it and also uh, wholesale customers. And I didn't know the meaning of the word, so I had to look it up and all of a sudden, uh, there's all these you know people wanting to buy full boxes of these. Um, and Kendama has kind of a fat tendency, so it is a volatile product. And we definitely felt that in the beginning of 2013, we had a lot of beautiful new product. Uh, we spent a lot of time product developing and we ended up having almost no cash, even though we did our sales was was definitely skyrocketing back then mm. um so we decided to go to so it kind of spiked out like everybody wanted one yeah for a short period of time really high demand and then after that it quickly went away yeah and we didn't really have the experience to go out in these big retails so yeah. it's kind of like we created a lot of demand. we also did some sales but we didn't really get everything through yeah um so we had a lot of product not a lot of money uh, but we got invited, uh, one of my friends from the online community called Alex Smith from uh, a brand called Tarakandam Tarakandam up in Canada. He invited me for the biggest competition in US back then called DamaFest in Atlanta. So the year 2013, we went to uh, US, me and my business partner and one of our sponsored players. And uh, Matthias, the, the, the other pro player, and I, we won the freestyle competition. And we also introduced our new line of product and we definitely made an impression. Um, and from that trip, we got our first um, US-based distributor. And also we got a lot of friends and a lot of connections in the Kanama world. And everybody was very happy to meet because we you know there's this old school Japanese way of playing Kanama and then there's the American way. And then we had something in the middle coming from Denmark, coming from Europe, something a little bit different. Um, and we introduced this new style of play and, and won the competition. Um, and some of the Japanese friends we got there um, also ended up becoming our distributor in Japan. So 2013 definitely gave us the opportunity to, to do what we do now. Mm. Um, have a um, global uh, business and be a brand instead of an importer. And then... Um, a guy called Jake Weens, who, who has another Kendama brand called the GT Kendamas. He uh, he was planning a tour from San Francisco, where he lived back then, all the way up to Seattle. Um, and he just, I guess, very jokingly said, hey, you should just come join. We're going to do this tour later in the summer. 
and I helped him up on that word. I kept calling him all the time. And uh, I think he was a little shocked that I took his word seriously, but we ended up going on tour with 10 of the best Kanawa crows in the world at this point. Um, all the way from San Francisco, doing these little Kandama jam stops where we would compete, compete with each other, introduce new players, do demos, sell Kandamas, and just, you know, interact with the local environment at skate parks and parks or where, wherever people wanted us. Mm. And, and that lasted for a few weeks and it was a lot of fun. But I could feel, you know, I definitely had something in me. I was playing all the time. Some days I would play 10 hours. I would really hone my hone my skills with this game. So we decided to go to uh, the World Championships uh, in Tokyo the next year, 2014. The Freestyle Kanama World Championships where I ended up winning and it was definitely uh, quite, a, quite a wild competition. So there's conventional championships and freestyle and it was the freestyle one I did. And I ended up uh, competing against the world champ Bonsatron um, in the in the quarterfinals, and he was definitely a favorite. Yeah. Um, and I felt very jet lagged. I didn't sleep. All this, but uh, um, as Yellen mentioned, I, I also commenced my heartfulness practice in the year 2010, same year as the company was founded. Um, and I really just tried to stay connected to my heart and remain in this flow state. And that's one of the things I find very interesting about meditation and kendama. You can really get into this flow state it's it's different ways but i think there's um, some similarities and it's you know very helpful it definitely helped me back then um, so I, I i won the championship and from then on i had to travel a lot i went uh, all over asia um, greenland hawaii all these different places and a few years just went on like that just traveling mm. all the time to competitions, fairs, um, et cetera. Yeah. And then a few years in, we decided not to be the front person uh, of the company ourselves. Um, so we started expanding the teams. Yeah, so in 2014, you had one of the biggest producers and brands and companies while also being one of the biggest competitors Yeah. at the same time, like, some kind of like Cristiano Ronaldo also owning a TV station or something like, right? Like yeah. kind of on both sides of the fence at that point. Yeah, it, it's definitely a lot of different tests to, to take care of. And I kind of just could see that, you know, it, it wasn't really feasible, you know, doing the training to be a Canal Pro and also wanting to grow the company. Um, it did, I mean, I, I had to choose and it was also kind of a tough choice. Um, but compared to football, uh, <laughs> Kendama is really small. You know, it's, 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 it's really niche. And it was also this feeling, you know, okay, I won the championship. Uh, now what? You know, it's not like there's any, you know, you can't really make a career of that. So I, I, I kind of had this vision of creating a Kendama community where as a sponsored player, you could definitely at least make a sweet side hustle. Um, and in the long run, you know, make real Kendama pros. Mm. So I felt, you know, also from, from the player's perspective, we should, you know, build a community and build yeah. some businesses that can support the players. Um, and I guess after this endless world tour, um, I, um, I had a lot of good connections in the Kendama community and we started recruiting some of the best players in the world. Um, one of the guys, Bonsatron, I mentioned earlier, you should check out his videos. Um, he's the four-time world champion and we ended up being the brain with the most Kendama champs uh, in the world and also being able to pull back and look a little bit into our strategies because up until this point, uh, we've definitely been embracing whatever cards we've been uh, playing, yeah. but not looking very far ahead. It's just yeah. been a lot of fun and doing what felt right in the moment. Um, but I guess it was time to, to step back and, and see, okay, now we've been doing this for, for five, six, seven years. What, what should happen now? Yeah. Um, and in 2017, we developed the Chrome Pop series, which is our entry model. It's a lot of value for money. And we did it in collaboration with some of the guys who also made uh, 
Lego architecture and really rebranded the, the Lego brick. And I guess it's kind of our Lego brick. It's definitely our bread and butter and um, that specific Chrome yeah, Pop. Yeah, the yeah. Chrome Pop series, our, our entry model. Um, and uh, we definitely had a, had a lot of problems with the stock and also finding different suppliers. And some suppliers really pushed a lot of stock down our throats and all the times, you know, <laughs> that there was all these kind of problems. So, so we can kind of like just been like traveling the world and driving, not looking very far ahead. And we had a lot of cleaning up to do and also mm -hmm realizing that this business could potentially scale and the urge to do something else than for kids and grown-ups and young adults, something else than just look at their screens all the time. It's definitely a lot of people want to have some fun and do some things, but all these, you know, all, all this technology is, it's so easy to get, get caught in that little trap. Um, so I feel like there's a very fine vision with Kanama because Kanama can teach you a lot of things. You can teach, you know, you can learn something about, you know, how, how to hone a skill. It's so simple, you know, you pull it up and get the ball to land and, you know, how, how can I become consistent? How can I learn new tricks? Um, so I guess some of these lessons can really make you a little bit better as a person. The um, art of learning. Kind yeah, of. the art of learning. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, so, so I guess a lot of the purpose with Kendama is bringing playback and you know, learn how to learn the art of learning. Mm. And, and that's a, it's a strong, it's a strong uh, vision. And I can definitely feel when recruiting people, the people who believe in the product, they, they're very passionate. So yeah, we started gathering a bit more of a team. Um, and we also had some um, restructuring of the company and the ownerships and, you know, figuring out who, who really wants to do this in the long run. Um, so in 2018, we defined uh, uh, what we want to become uh, long term, and and the plan is the vision is to become an urban, playful lifestyle brand. Um, so instead of just thinking about Kendama uh, separately, thinking about you know how can our brand become something, and what what can our edge be more than just Kendama. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot of urban brands out there. It's a lot of toughness and, you know, a little bit grimy. Um, mm. So I think it's fun to be playful and, and, and do that uh, as a lifestyle. Mm, so differing from other urban brands that are more serious in a way or more yeah. like intense, you have a more happy, playful approach to it. Yeah, and I, and I think playfulness is a lot about, you know, being in the present, yeah. And also not really worrying about what other people think, you know, yeah. you're just, you know, you're doing what you love. And I think it's important to keep playing. Yeah. So a lot of uh, the branding we've done has always been targeted uh, towards the, the older brother. Um, it, because of course, a, a lot of kids buy Kendamas and our main demographic is, I'd say 10 to 14 year old boys mainly, but also some girls. But if we target it to late teens or early twenties, we see a lot of, you know, these kids, they mm. kind of ride along anyways. Yeah. And I remember my friend's teacher in high school, he had a bad shoulder and he would, you know, have to use two hands. And he always went for the Kendama um, when I was doing some, some grammar. Um, okay. So that's going all the way back from 2009 and uh, some funny idea from a, like a, like a trip with some friends going through like a whole endless bumps on the road until like defining a strategy and a philosophy and a vision. And so what's the state of the country today? Like what's the state of Chrome Kendama today? Well, so today we have a, we have a pro team of pro players and yeah. uh, we pay them royalties on the um, yeah. product with their names on. And we have these different teams. We have more than 50 uh, sponsored players all around the world. We do uh, wholesale to more than 30 countries. Um, we have uh, some web shops with the customers in, in more than 61 countries. We have uh, weekly Kendama clubs in more than five countries. Um, and then we're four, -time, or four, four guys working full-time and, and 10 part-timers on top of that. So we can really, you know, 
contract and expand the organization when, yeah. when needed. Yeah. And we're also the host of the European Kendama Championship. And yeah, it's a, it's kind of like pretty spread out. And you're seeing quite some, still some opportunity to grow and expand and keep building this. Definitely. Yeah. So um, big picture, I think the general population haven't really seen Kendama yet. And it's a relatively cheap product. So I think most, most of the people in the world, they can, they can afford it and, and benefit from it. And as wonderful as all this technology is, I, I also see this, you know, most people are becoming more and more conscious of doing something different than being yeah. you know, on their phone. And that's the cool thing about Kendama. You can, you can bring it everywhere and you can play by yourself yeah uh, under normal circumstances you can play together it's a conversation starter definitely people come over want to talk about it all the time want to try it exactly yeah. um and we also have seen you know in our economic clubs that that kids from you know all kinds of backgrounds and neighborhoods they really meet up around this thing yeah um, so so i think the potential for kendama in general is is huge and what we've been working on since 2017 is, you know, forming and kind of like refining, of course, the business engine, but also the brand. So making a brand that can scale and, you know, mm. all of these, these things. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, from the perspective of today's theme and embracing things or embrace it as the word just in general, I mean, when I hear this story, I, just starting out from kind of nowhere, not really knowing where it was going to go, but just embracing that opportunity, taking that chance all the way back from the beginning. I mean, I guess today you're businessman or like you're, you're corporate kind of, you know, a lot of things about legal stuff and chartered accountants and strategies and, you know, all this stuff. I, at that point, when it started out, did you have any kind of, idea of moving in that direction in life not at all no. it was uh, kind of just you know seizing the opportunity in the moment and, and really embracing you know yeah. what's there uh, and then doing what what feels right um, so it's been quite the right and it's it's been a lot of ups and downs yeah. um, you know when I'm speaking it's, it's of course you know all the all the fun things but I feel like <laughs> um, the most important lessons is definitely the the negative ones you know where, where we've been for example uh, there was around the time when you were helping out we had a very crooked accountant and ended up having a very sketchy experience yes. Um, yes. and you know all of a sudden that you did not embrace no <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think you know the experiences where things go south or you yeah. know when we almost, you know, like the thing about the stock and having no cash that happened not only one time, but really, you know, yeah. having this tough situation where, you know, we really need to get rid of this product or, you know, we have to quit, you yeah. know, to shut down the company. You know, th those kind of situations really teach one a lot of lessons. Um, and I think just the, like the, the present, you know, in the history of this company, um, the, the like the current situation you're facing is is always the most important yeah but i think the lesson that i'm learning and I'm still trying to learn is you know have have a longer perspective and see you know really have a, the long vision yeah. how, how can we make the whole world play again yeah you know that that would be fun um and and how can can be a part of that yeah so that's kind of where i'm at now uh, and back in you know 20 2010 i just wanted to play myself yeah maybe yeah. with a few friends but it's also just from um, like a more general perspective. I think when you are younger, you you are met with these kind of opportunities, and you can choose not to take that opportunity, or you can take it and embrace it. But then after that, let's say you go in 2013 to the US and you win this championship. I mean, one thing is to say yes to just take part in that. But then once you win, there's the whole following of that. Okay, you get awareness. People start understanding 
who you are, what is Chrome Kandama. And you can also leave that at the table and say, I thought I was going to be a designer or I thought I was going to work with arts or some kind of something else. And do you know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. also take yeah. that in and then say, okay, this is what's coming my way. I'm embracing it and I take it in. So some of my friends, they think Kandama is cool. I tried it. They want to start a company. Let's do it. Okay. Then we started the company. Let's, let's then embrace these things that come along with the opportunities. Yeah, for sure. And I think youth is a great time to, to try different things out. And, you know, it's, it's great to, you know, just try something and, and see if it works, you know, great. If it doesn't work, you know, try and switch it up. You have a lot of time uh, when you're young. And, and I think one of the interesting things entering your twenties is, you know, till your twenties, everybody's kind of been following the same path. Yeah. And, and now you've got to, you know, stand on your own legs. Yeah. Do you want to take some more education? Do you want to try and build a company, join a startup? You know, there, there's all these different things. And I think it's so important to really do what feels right. Yeah. And yeah, it's great to think, but I think it's even more important to feel what, what yeah. feels right. Uh, and what feels right in that moment might not feel right in the future. So yeah, it's always now. Yeah. It's, it's always now you want to. And I guess in that, when you say thinking and feeling, I also have this idea that there's some kind of idea of expectation. Oh, I think I'm going to be like this, or I, I imagine I'm ending up as this type of person or in this role or this field of profession. And then something is happening. I mean, this, this story is a perfect example, but I've also seen it with many other people that you talk to them and they say, did you know you were going to be, you know, a lawyer or whatever. And they said, no, man, I thought I was going to be a musician or something. And then these things come in our youth and, and we have the, the time, as you say, and the chance to, to follow it if it feels right. right? Yeah. I think, yeah. Before you know it, when you're on the other side, when you're 21, it's hard to, it's maybe harder to see it, but from looking back from, 28 or 9 or whatever yeah and 31 i mean it's quite obvious that you have some of these things and you can take them or not yeah yeah um thank you so far i I was also i would also actually have a question can i can it's okay if i'm asking yeah Uh, also it's also a question from the audience um i mean i was just watching this video where you're playing in the world championship and for me, everything that you do seems so so light and so playful. And I was just wondering, I don't know, did you at some point deal as well with um, a stress? Because when you're going on the stage, it's really your, your super relaxed and everything seems so easy. Um, how do you do it? Or can you say something about this? <laughs> yeah definitely so you see you know the kendama is relatively small so just a little bit of jitter definitely you know affects your play mm-hmm. um so i, I think for, for all kendama players uh, competitive players is something you need to deal with um one way or the other and i definitely felt you know a lot of you know stress having to go up on the big stage and you know the dj is pumping tracks and you know it's just it's just a very intense you know atmosphere and you you only have a lot of you know 30 45 seconds at a time so you have to deliver every single second um so of course first of all knowing your craft you know being being home on your skills is Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time you know the meditation uh for me has been such an important way to turn the stress and all the pressure mm. into a feeling of excitement you know there's a lot of energy mm. but instead of it being against you you know you're with it and you use it to express yourself and even you know just fill you up with happiness uh, mm. and and be present on the stage and also connect with the crowd mm-hmm. i think you know the combination of really like honing your craft and honing your meditation, it'll, it'll really work. And not only for Kendama, but also, you know, personally, if, you know, with this business, there's been a lot of big decisions and a lot of responsibility and a lot of, you know, decisions where it could really lead us to the next level or make us bankrupt. There's been a lot of those. <laughs> um, and knowing what you feel 
and and being clear in your mind you know the the cleaning method uh, and the meditation has has been such a big help yeah i see there has also been a question for the audience because you said um uh knowing your craft yeah uh, how much or how can we imagine this how much um how much time uh can you practice kandama on a single day i would say <laughs> <laughs> 24 hours probably like 12 to 14 hours wow how much did you practice 14 hours one day on a, on a for me, for me stop so to say with kendama of course it is practicing but for me it's never felt like practicing you know mm -hmm. or not really of course i practiced but it was such just an integrated part of you know my lifestyle and i really enjoyed it and mm -hmm. And was so deep into it so from the period i'd say 20 2010 to 2015 i could easily spend in maybe three or four hours a day and then some days i'd go more than 10 hours mm -hmm. especially during trips and um, and that's kind of like the cool part of, <laughs> cool part about kendama you know if, if we compare it to skateboarding or other action sports you know or even extreme sports, it's it's very safe, <laughs> and the ball is attached with a string, so you don't really have to bend over. It's kind of like it's more physical than chess, definitely, <laughs> um, but it's not as tough as you know when you're running. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, I guess there's also a creative element to it. I mean, a lot yeah. of the things that that gave you an edge in those competitions with Matthias and the World Championship was also coming up with new ways to make tricks new ideas something yeah. so different was, so we came up with a with a lot of new tricks um, so back then the baseline was this japanese kanama with you know a book and a lot of tricks in it and of course we couldn't read that book so we just had to come up with our own stuff and um, that way we ended up creating a lot of a lot of new tricks and other new styles of play and one thing i always cared about was you know the way you do the tricks is more important than you know what trick you do mm. Mm, i see thank you so much we are slowly coming to an end even with the time um but yeah thank you so much for this uh, really interesting story about chrome and um yeah also about probably your playful attitude towards life <laughs> um, and also yalte thank you very much for joining us You're welcome yeah Think. Is there anything that you would last uh, that you would like to say in the end, or that you would somehow that you feel not having expressed, or you are? Uh... Um, yeah, I feel I feel pretty good. But of course, you know, if you have any, if there's anybody out there in the crowd who has any further questions or anything, feel free to to hit me up. You can. Yeah. Or can you probably just? Is there, or can you in the end probably just show us uh, a last trick or something? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, this, this will be great. Thank you very much. Oh, I missed. <laughs> <laughs> it's no problem. It's anyway amazing. Play as if working. Work as if playing. There we go. Okay, thank you very much. I think that uh, actually deserves a virtual applause at least. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Toke Danielte, for joining today. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you. Bye. 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 Stay well. Bye. Bye.